Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Devotees of Jesus. I am your host Julian Phillips and let's begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, you know what best touches each of our hearts. Touch our hearts here today in this passage and give us the grace to be more connected to you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 5, verses 31 to 47. I can do nothing of myself, and I need to hear another one to judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I bore witness to myself, my testimony would be worthless. But another one is bearing witness to me, and I know that his testimony is true when he bears witness to me. John also bore witness to the truth when you sent messages to him. But I do not seek such human testimony. I recall this for you, so that you may be saved. John was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were willing to enjoy his light. But I have greater evidence than that of John, the works which the Father entrusted me to carry out. The very works I do bear witness that the Father has sent me. Thus he who bears witness to me is the Father who sent me. You've never heard his voice and have never seen his likeness. Then as long as you don't believe in his messenger, his word is not in you. You search in the scriptures thinking that in them you will find life. Yet scripture bears witness to me, but you refuse to come to me that you may live. I am not seeking human praise, but I have known that love of God is not within you. Even though I have come in my Father's name, you do not accept me. But if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. As long as you seek praise from one another instead of seeking the glory coming from the only God, how can you believe? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. Moses himself, in whom you placed your hope, accuses you. If you believed Moses, you would, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, well, how will you believe what I have to say? The Gospel of the Lord prays to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As long as you seek praise from one another, instead of seeking the glory coming from the only God, how can you believe? I am... Um, or should I say my most recent occupation is that of teacher. I teach teenagers and part of teaching teenagers is seeing them respond to peer pressure. And watching them, it also makes it very clear to me that being subject to peer pressure doesn't stop when you're a child, it goes on. So society, our peers, have set expectations for us. Conformity is something people feel bound to, to respond to. So there are some people, the last thing they want to do is stand out. Once they remain within the norms of society, there's no spotlight on them and then they're happy. Now, they, that may, may seem like a form of humility, but it's not. God is talking to us individually. And part of God talking to you is your listening to him. But how can you listen to him if you are so fixated about what others think? Magic is not something that we teach, but I, I want to use the word magic nonetheless. Magic will happen in your life when you get to the place when you stop caring what others think, with the exception, of course, of God, his family, and friends. Now, what, what others say in this century is that if it makes sense, then it's true. The whole lot of religion is therefore subject to derision in this century, because so much of this, and I'm being honest, doesn't make sense. But as we said in a previous episode, <clears throat> just because it doesn't make sense, that doesn't mean it's not true. So 
to put it in a way that maybe more of you will get. In the English language, there's the phrase a sixth sense. So the five senses are the sense of sight, hearing, touching, smelling, tasting. These are the five senses. Now this sixth sense doesn't correspond to anything tactile, but it's just annoying. So I've had this happen to me many times. I'm sure as you, you know, you just get a, a sense that you should get up off the chair and move when you normally wouldn't. I recall one young man giving me a story where he was to be um, in his neighborhood playing football at a certain hour. And, you know, something just told him, take your time. He reached a whole half an hour late and saw much commotion. And when he asked what was going on, they explained that a shooting had taken place and it took place at the time he would normally be there. Now, what was that? That was God talking to this young man and though he didn't understand the nature of the message, he didn't understand where, what was this calling to just take his time, that potentially saved his life. What saved his life? His listening. I am convinced God sends us messages all the time. All the time God sends us messages, but are we listening? Because what good is it that God is sending messages and we are not receiving it? We are not hearing it. We are not listening to it. Now, up and down throughout the ages, we have had people who have secluded themselves. They've gone into the mountains. They've gone into the caves. And closer to, let us say, within the last 2,000 years, they've gone into the monasteries where they could be with God without distraction. The monastery is a place of silence, if you will. And it's like that, so you, there, there are no other competing voices other than God. No disrespect to anyone who has chosen the monastic life, but in a sense that is easier than what we do. Because when you are in the midst of an environment where it's, it's just God and simplicity, well, it's kind of easy to make a pick. But here now we have 24-hour news, the internet, what our friends say, what are, what are the, the norms and values of our generation. And then there's God somewhere in that mix. We now, therefore, are stronger because we live in this environment. Because to pick God in the face of all of these competing voices shows that we have been given the grace to focus so I want to pray wherever you are that you have the grace to hone in on the voice of God and respond positively when you get the message. And as I said before, how do you hone in to the voice of God? It is as simple as reaching for the closest feeling to you that is akin to what is felt in heaven. So if at this point in time, the best you can do is feel relaxed, well then feel relaxed. If the best you can do is feel in what you might say, curious, interested, feel curious, feel interested, do something to feed that interest. And if the best you can do is reach for something fun, well then do something fun. Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us.